Listen, I wrote a little song and it goes like this. Come on, put your hands together.
Greetings, I'm Prophetess Charlene D. Holtz. And I'm Bishop Randall E. Holtz. And we want to welcome you to the New Hope NBC Ministries of Miami, where we believe in building strong families for the 21st century and beyond. We welcome you to our live broadcast as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord. We invite you to join us in the praise and worship experience. Please invite a friend or two to come along as well. Now, let's go right into the service. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and choose to be glad in it. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to a place called New Hope. Let's go before the throne of grace, before our amazing praise team comes to usher us in. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come this morning with thanksgiving on our lips, oh God. Lord, we just come to say thank you for yet another day. God, we thank you for waking us up in our right minds. We thank you, oh God, for the activity and the use of our limbs. God, we give you glory and we give you praise for this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Let's have church. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise this morning. Come on, those that truly love him, come on and lift your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Wake up the house. Make a joyful noise this morning. Come on, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, wherever you are, come on, make a noise. If in your car, shout hallelujah. If you're home, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, make that joyful noise. Send that sound through the room. Come on, send that sound through the room. Let's usher him in this morning. Come on, let's sing it down this morning. Let's send the praises up so the blessings can fall. Hallelujah. Come on. Is the Lord good to you? Come on, is he good to you? Come on, come on, is he good to you? Come on, not just myself, but he's good to all of us. Come on, come on. Woo! People of God, say hallelujah. Hey, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, everybody, say, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People of God, say, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on. People from every nation. People from every nation and tongue. From? From generation Now, to come on, generation. let's worship him. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We worship you. For who? For who you are. Come on. We worship. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We worship you. For who? For who you are. Come on. Tell me. Why do we worship him? You From the top, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Hey, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Hey, Lord, you're good. Yeah. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. People of God say, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Here we go. People from every nation. People from every nation and tongue. From? From generation to Come generation. Come on. Here we go. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We worship you. For who? For who you are. Yeah. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. For who? For who you are. Come on. You are good. You are good. Yeah. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. 
for worship. We come to set this atmosphere, Lord God, so you can do what you do and what you do best. Hallelujah. So we just praise you this morning. We praise you this morning. We lift you up, God. Our hands, our hearts, our minds. God, we praise you. Come on, wherever you are, just lift your hand and say, Lord, I praise you. Come on, wherever you are, lift your hands and say, Lord, I praise you. Come on, in the good and the bad, God, I praise you. Happy or sad, God, I praise you. Hallelujah. Because I know, I know that I know that, God, you got it. You got it, God. 
You got it, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got it, God. You got it, God. So, God, I give all these problems, all these burdens and issues and things that's going on right now. God, we put it in your hands this morning. God, you got it. You already know the outcome. All we got to do is praise you. All we got to do is lift our hands and our voice and give you praise. Because you are already in control. Hallelujah.
You've been so wonderful. You've been so marvelous, God. Huh. You've been so worthy. You've been so awesome. I praise you. For keeping me, God. For saving me, God. I praise you. For never leaving my side. For staying with me 24 hours of the day. us, God, on the highways, on the byways, God, I praise you. Come on. In our jobs, God, on our home, I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. Come on. I praise you. I praise you, God. I praise you. I praise you, God. I praise you. 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 I praise you, God. I praise you. Come on. I praise you. I praise you. Woo! I praise you, God. I praise you. I praise you, God. Yeah. And I praise you. Come on and bless his name. Come on and bless his name. Come on and praise him this morning. Come on. I know you got a reason. I know I got a reason. So come on, praise him for your reason. Praise him for the reason. God, I praise you right now. I praise you right now. I lift you up right now. I praise you. I'll 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 praise you, God. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you want to praise the Lord? How many of you are willing to praise him in spite of? Because, Lord, you are good. Not just good sometimes, but, Lord, you're good all the time. And for that, God, we can praise you in the good. We can praise you in the bad. We can praise you when we come. We can praise you when we go. We can praise you through this pandemic because, Lord, you are good all the time. Somebody say all the time. Lord, you are good all the time. And for that, God, we just come to give you praise. Monday through Friday, we had to go to work, but something was special about today. We got on our clothes or we got up with intentions on praising the Lord. And God, we didn't want to just roll out of bed and, and, and just do anything. But God, we came to praise you. We came to shabak your name. We came to lift you up. God, we praise you. It's an honor and a privilege every time we open our eyes, every time we can breathe the air. We're here in the sanctuary. Many of you are home and in different places and looking at the feed. We have members in the hospital giving him a yet praise. So don't let the rocks cry out for you. Praise the Lord while you still have blood running warm in your veins. While you can still breathe. Praise the Lord because he is good. Not sometime, but all the time. Amen. Today you are in for a treat. When I say a treat, we have our brother, our, one of our, the people that make us laugh the most. We call him Smiley. He's a, he's a man of God. He's a husband. He's a, 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 a brother. He's, he's everything. But today we have a special treat. And to, um, to actually introduce him to some, because he doesn't need an introduction. He's a powerhouse. We have our very own Minister Sigmund McGee getting ready to introduce. So after Sigmund comes and introduce the, the, the man who will break forth the word of God, we're going to get our song of preparation and get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, right in your homes. Amen. And good morning, New Hope. Good morning. Well, I have the privilege of introducing the speaker of today who will be bringing the word. I'm very grateful because God is sending new sons and daughters of thunder. He is anointing another generation to lead his people. One of those sons are with us this morning, and his name is Minister Jamal Bell. That's Minister Jamal Bell. We call him Smiley. He has a great spirit, great zeal, and he has boundless energy. 
He sings, he plays, and he preaches. That's three powerful weapons. I call it a triple threat. This young man is a fireball. In the words of my prophetess Charlene Holtz, he is armed and dangerous. And we are so proud of him, and we know that the Lord is going to continue to use and bless him. I just want to say this morning, if you would position yourself, open your heart, the word that the Lord has given this young man will change your life. Right before he comes, our praise team is going to give a song of preparation, and the next voice you will be here will be none other than my brother, my friend, Minister Jamal Bell. Amen.
we pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, you are our strength, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. Lord, as I stand here, and your people that are out there listening, Father, I ask you that you'll give me preaching power. That somebody will be saved. That somebody will be touched, Lord. We all need a word from you, Lord. Move self out the way and you speak through me, Lord. We give your name the praise and the honor. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in our sight. Oh, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Jesus, help your boy. Give me preaching powers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's, it's an honor and a privilege to be here once again. I thank God for allowing me to wake up this morning and some of you can say the same thing. And I'm grateful for this opportunity. I thank God for my bishop and my prophetess for allowing me this opportunity to speak and give what God has given me. I praise God for them. They are my spiritual parents, and I thank God for their uh, advice they always give me and their love that they have shown me all through the years that I've been here, and I thank God for them. I thank God for uh, the New Hope family, they have shown me love here, and I praise God for them. This is my home, too. And I am so excited to give the word today after that introduction from my brother, Sigmund McGee. <laughs> we praise God. I called him last week, and uh, I reflected back how long I've been here with him, and uh, I said, I can't believe I've been here nine years. It don't feel like that, and I praise God for it, and I, I'm excited for what God is doing through us over there in that corner over there. And I wouldn't trade it for nothing. I said I praise God for allowing me to come here and to, to tag on with him in the music department as far as with the drums. But I want to call your attention to a familiar passage of scripture that uh, we all heard before. But as our bishop would say, you get fresh revelation every time you go back. Matthew, the 14th chapter and the 22nd verse says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And I want to go down and skip to uh, verse 32. And it says, And when they were come into the ship and the wind ceased, then they were in the ship and came and worshipped him and saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. I want to talk for a few minutes from a subject that the Lord gave me. It says, Surviving the storm. Surviving the storm. And some of us can testify that we are in some storms today. And we are surviving the storm. And maybe you're still in the storm, but... Just have the faith to believe that I'm going to survive this storm. Matter of fact, in 1992, there was a storm that we're all familiar with. Uh, Hurricane Andrew came and wiped down uh, South Florida. Uh, I was told about this pastor named Pastor Wise, who was down there in that uh, Goose, Florida, that uh, pastor went to see and check on him and he responded that he was okay, and he asked him, did you preach? And he said, yes, I preached that Sunday, and he said, what was your sermon? He said, my sermon was, God got more. God got more houses. God has some more cars. God has some more clothes. God has some more. And then he closed with saying, God has some more storms. And since then, we don't had so many storms that have come our way in this life journey. We had physical storms, financial storms, all kinds of storms that have come to hinder our lives. But, oh, my brothers and sisters, how many know that Jesus is the master of the storm? Jesus controls the storm. Jesus, uh, he moves the storm how he wants it to be. And in this text, we will see that the disciples, uh, my brothers and sisters, are sent out on the shore. And Jesus tells them to go out on the water in this boat. And he will meet them later on. And in this text, I find out that brings me to a first point. 
point, which is uh, the problem of the storm. There was a problem in this storm. They had a problem with this storm. They were a distance from the shore. And sometimes God will fix it in our lives uh, where we are a distance from the shore. You get uh, a distance from safety, from a distance from the safe zone, a distance from uh, your luxury comfort. God will distance you uh, from uh, safety. But thanks be to God, uh, he allows them to get a distance uh, from the shore. And they got far enough to where they couldn't even see their way back. It was so dark out there. And I can imagine if we were out there in the ocean in a small little boat. And I don't know about you, but I've been on a couple of fishing trips and night fishing trips. And it's pretty dark out there. You can't hardly see nothing. So I can just imagine them being out there on that, sh on that water in that boat. Not a ship, but a boat. A, a sailboat. And the water is smashing the ship. And, and they're rocking back and forth and they are about to lose their mind because they saying they're going to die because they don't know how they're going to make it to the shore with this wind coming and the boat is just rocking and here it is my brothers and sisters these are experienced shipmen they know how to move and navigate through the ship and navigate but they could not navigate because the wind was too strong and where God had rearranged and turned the direction of the wind so every time they tried to navigate it just was impossible so the only thing that was in front of them is death we're going to die we're not going to make it what are we going to do there is a problem in this storm. There's a problem. And here it is. Not only did they have a problem, but my brothers and sisters, some of us got problems that we just can't handle. We don't understand. We try to fix it and handle it on our own. And that's when God comes and turn it around and make sure you realize that it's not you that can fix the storm. That's not you that can fix the problem. Only I can. Only you can rely on me. But don't get caught up, my brothers and sisters in the problem of the storm but pay attention to the performance of the Savior pay attention to the performance of the Savior many of us are caught up in our problems and caught up in our storms that we forget that God can do all things but fail the Bible says he waited until it got real bad. And I don't know about you, but on my life's journey, I've had some situations that made me don't want to throw in the towel. And that's when God came and showed up and showed out. Here it is. Their life is on the line. They are in the dark. They are, the boat can flip over. They can die. They can drown. But this is when the Lord shows up. And some of us are on our last dime. Some of us are on our last we just cried out so much that we can't do it no more we can't take this life no more the pandemic has caused a mighty stress on our lives but God shows up when we least expect it the Bible says he came walking on water he came walking on the water he came walking on the very thing that had a threat to their lives and some of us got some situations that's been a threat to our lives that causes us uh, to want to give up but how many know it's under God's feet uh, he's walking on the water he's walking on the very thing uh, that can cause them uh, to die but uh, like my brother said on last week uh, we got to stop worrying and worship uh, see here it is they were worried they were worried but God comes uh, on the water he walks he said don't you be a good cheer don't you know who I am I I am who I am. I'm the one that healed the lepers. I'm the one that turned water into the wine. Do you know who I am? Be a good cheer. And I come to encourage somebody today that if you realize and understand who God really is, you won't worry about your problems. You won't worry about, yeah, your circumstance, your situations or your storms. But what you will really say is, I'm surviving the storm. When somebody comes and approach you and asks you a question how you're doing you tell them I'm surviving the storm matter of fact I'm a survivor I survived some storms in the past and I'm going to survive this and I just believe that if God brought me through that he'll bring me through this be a good cheer yeah he says be a good cheer 
Not only do we got to pay attention to the performance of the Savior and what God is able to do, because I don't know about you, but I can't focus on what I'm going through and saying, oh, I got this problem. Oh, I got this problem. But instead, what I'm going to do is the Savior that I serve, the God that I serve, he sits high and mighty. He's mightier than I. There's nobody can compare to him. He's all in a category of his own. That's what you got to start speaking. You got to start telling the world when you come in contact with somebody. Don't let them see. That's why folk can't recognize when a real saint is going through something because they're going to rejoice knowing that their reward is greater than what they're going through. That's why I can still smile. That's why I can still praise them. I can't look back what's behind me because what's in front of me is greater. Look at the car for instance. Don't you realize the car in the car, the windows, the biggest uh, window in the car is the windshield and when you look at the mirror the rear view mirror is much smaller. I just want to tell you the reason why is because what's in front of you is greater than what's behind you. So whatever you're looking just look forward. Yeah, I can't focus on this. I gotta be a good cheer. Why? Because God is is in control of this storm. God is the reason I can say I'm going to survive. God is on the throne and he's never changed. He's still the God from yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah, we're going to have new problems after problems, but thanks be to God, he helps us to get through the storms. And I just want you to know, yeah, while you were in this storm, you ain't by yourself. Because when he walked on water, if you ever noticed, the storm was still growing. It was still uh, growing because and later on in the chapter, you will see that Peter, when he comes out on the water, he begins to walk. But he noticed the storm was still rising. And that's when he took his eyes off of Jesus. And I just want to let you know that whatever storm you in, you ain't by yourself. God is with you. Just remember that. That's something to be encouraged. That's something to rejoice about. To know that the Lord is with you when folk turn their backs on you. The moment things go wrong and the moment things go bad in your life, that's when people will start ignoring your calls. They'll start turning it to automatic voice message. I can't help you on that situation. I can't be there for you. But how many know God? He's always there. He just want to see where your faith is. Are you going to rely on me? Or are you going to rely on other things to help you get through this storm? And so he's walking on the water and he comes towards them and I'm sure they're frightened because it's dark and they can't see and, 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 and they don't know the wind is blowing, the water, the waves are hitting the boat and they're about to die and and Jesus comes walking out and he tells them, be a good cheer. But not only that, my brothers and sisters, do we look at the performance of the Savior, but the program for the saints. The Bible declares Peter looked at him and said, if, you, if it's really you, bid me to come and the master told Peter come out and walk out on the water and he keeps his eyes on Jesus the Bible says waves and Peter took his eyes off of Jesus once he saw those waves and he began to sink he, as he began to sink he begins to look up and ask Jesus to help him but I just want to stop right there my brothers and sisters some of us in this storm we can't take our eyes off of Jesus we cannot take our eyes off of the Lord because, my brothers and sisters, that's the only reason you made it through the past storms. You didn't make it because of your ideas and your strategies. You made it because of your connection with the master. Because God, once he's connected with you, you're going to make it. But here it is now. You got to remember the devil task. His job is to disconnect you from the master. His job is to 
separate you as far as he can. Why? Because he'll begin to put thoughts in your mind. He'll begin to tell you to do things to take you out. Some people go and say, oh, they committed suicide and they did this and that. And now every morning I get up, I said to myself, I say to myself, I thank God for being in my right mind because my right mind will tell me, get connected to Jesus Christ because he'll tell you which way to go. He'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you what to say. Matter of fact, I, I had an experience last week. I was just so angry. I was upset. It almost brought me out of character. I wasn't, a, I wasn't thinking about being saved at that moment. But you know what? I was laying in the bed and I was about to commit something. I said, uh, that person keep on messing with me I'm gonna snap and you know what I heard the voice of Jesus he said don't you know how to get down on my knees and call my name when I heard that my brothers and sisters I got up out of the bed and I got down on my knees and I began to call his name I began to call him and call him until things begin to change the whole situation peace began to happen my mind and begin to relax and I just thought about it no matter what we go through in life no matter the things we do in life we can still hear his voice we can still hear him the anger in me but I still heard the voice of God why because of my connection with him when you got a connection with God regardless of your situation you can still hear his voice the program for the saints he, he reaches out his hand and pulls him up. Ever since that day, my brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but we've been singing this song. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shores, very deeply stand within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters love lifted me and now I safe am I and I don't know about you this morning but I get excited when I think about where he's brought me from when I think about who he is I got a reason to give him praise it was love that lifted me and when I go back to the boat the Bible declares they begin to worship him and I don't know about you today but whatever storm you may be in whatever Whatever situation you may be in, you got to learn how to worship God in your storms. Begin to celebrate God in your storms. The Bible says when Jesus got in the boat, they begin to worship him. They begin to give him praise. And I don't know about you, but I heard another verse says in another chapter, you got to learn how to enter into his presence with thanksgiving but the message bible says you gotta have a password and that password is thank you and I don't know about you but whatever it is whatever you're going through just have thank you on your lips Lord I thank you I don't know where the next bill comes from but Lord I thank you just look around and see what God's brought you from. That's enough to give him praise. That's enough to tell him thank you. Matter of fact, Marvin Sapp came out with a song that says, here I am standing. I'm still standing. I'm here after all that I've been through. I've survived every toil, every snare. I'm still alive. I'm alive. I'm I'm here. There were times where I almost gave up. I've cried and said, Lord, it's too much. But El Shaddai, here 
while he was there all the time by his grace he's keeping me alive by his grace and I come to tell somebody wherever you are the reason you're still here is not because you've been so good not because you've been so holy not because you've been so righteous but the reason you're still here is because of God's grace and his mercy that's why I can testify that I survived because of his grace and mercy that I'm still here. I want to tell you one more thing. The reason you are alive today is because there is more. God got more for you to do. God's got more work for you to do. That's why you can survive this storm. That's why when everything comes your way, you're still making it. This is not an accident that you are alive. You are alive because there's more let me tell you one more thing the devil can't kill what God wants alive so let them throw all kind of tactics let them throw whatever they want to do if God wants you here you're still going to be here I don't know about you today but I'm reminded of an old man who had two horses one horse was grace and the other horse was mercy yeah he would take mercy through the town and he would take grace through the city and one day grace straggling and couldn't walk no more so he took grace to the veterinarian and he asked the doctor what's wrong with grace and the doctor said it's time to put grace down it's time to give grace up and the old man said oh man he took the saddle off of grace he said why you taking the saddle off I'm gonna go get a new horse and while he was taking the saddle off when he came back the man was putting the saddle back on grace and the doctor said what you doing the old man said it was grace that brought me this far and grace is going to lead me on and I stopped by to tell somebody the reason you're here is because of God's grace God's grace God's grace I'm a survivor wherever you are just look towards heaven and say thank you Lord I'm surviving the storm thank you Lord that I'm still here to tell you thank you after all I've been through I'm still here I couldn't have made it without you but I'm grateful to God that I'm still here and why I'm still here it's because he got more work for me to do anybody know that today when you a servant of God God's got more work for you to do weeping may endure for a night but joy joy will come in the morning if you believe it write in the comment I'm surviving the storm I'm a survivor write in the comment I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me oh I'm happy today because I can look back and see what God brought me from I just gotta holler one more time You've been good. wait till the day come when we get back together but as my bishop would say if you know he's been good 
you ought to shout yeah if you know he made a way you ought to shout yeah if he keep opening doors you ought to shout yeah shout yeah shout yeah shout yeah oh yeah Survive in the storm. Yes, yes. You're going to turn that thing around and say, a storm survivor. I don't survive storms that have come my way. Why? Because I'm connected to the master. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you today, whatever storm you may be in right now, continue to look towards heaven. Because that's where our help comes from. Comes from the Lord. And some of you might be out there that's not saved and that wants to make that connection and be connected to Jesus Christ. This is your opportunity. We're going to open up the doors of the church and allow you to make that make up in your mind that I want to be connected so I can survive this storm that comes my way. church are open right now is a good time even right here in your living room give your life to Christ what a word surviving this storm surviving the storm surviving the storm you can survive the storm yes. if you have the right connection. Hallelujah. You can testify this morning, I am a survivor because God brought me through and God is still taking me through this storm. Thank you, Jamal. My, what a word today. We honor God for this rhema word today, for this vessel for this man of God who gave it all, left it all on the line to tell us the story how we can survive this storm. God bless you, my brother. Amen. You preach. As the old folks say, the horns off a billy goat today. And we thank God for you. This is a fantastic January. I tell you, God is getting getting us greater, giving us greater, moving us higher. Every Sunday, I'm so glad to be the honored pastor of this great church and to have all of these various gifts surrounding us. He poured, he poured it out today, and God know he preached his soul out today. God bless you, Jamal, and God bless you, our listeners. Run and tell it. Run and tweak it. Run and share it. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are so thankful, prophetess, for our son this morning. He gave us a word that revolutionized our life and uh, lift the burdens off of those who are heavy laden today. 
We have the answer now. We know, we know the outcome of this. God will help us survive. We have the victory yeah. through Jesus Christ, yeah. our Lord. Amen. 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 It's giving time. And right now is a good time to sow your seed. Amen. Right now is a good time to plant into the kingdom. You can give this morning by going to our cash app. NHMBC 1881. You can give by going online to Tifling or by text giving. All the information is right there on your screen. Or you can go to our website, newhopembc.com, and click the donate or the give button, and your seed will be received at the proper place. Or you can write the check, put it in the mail, or you can drop it by the church. We are here every day. Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. Any way you choose, just become a participant and partake in the process that God has promulgated for you to get blessed. Every time you give, listen, every time you give, God open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. I'm so excited about the day. How about you, prophets? I am so excited. I'm a sub y'all 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 say I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor of the storm. I've been to some storms, but I didn't stop. I didn't quit. I didn't give in. I didn't throw in the towel. I am a survivor, honey. If it had not been for the Lord, honey, Jesus out there on the water waiting for me, forbidding me to come. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about y'all, what y'all going through, but I know what I've been through. I've been through some storms. I've been through some trials. I've been through some tribulation. But thank God Almighty, I am living witness today that I am a survivor, and you will survive when you put Jesus first, when you, when you keep him first, and you he will let you go through whatever battles you, you're going through. Um, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. I thank our son for that word. He preached the word. Look how God is raising up our youth. The young man preaching. Mama was over there shouting this morning. I'm so full. I'm about ready to, to just to run. I can't wait till we get back. God has been good to us. 20, 2020, we still here. I am a survivor of the storm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo! I know how that feels. My God. Feel like you want to run on now and see what the end is going to be. Amen. Well, New Hope family, we are deeply saddened as we stand today rejoicing. We are deeply saddened on the passing of the mother of our church, Mother Clara Temple. And our valiant member, uh, Deacon George Edgecombe. Mama was 105 years old. Look at God. God gave her 105 wonderful years. Nothing but the epitome of love and class. And uh, she would always, you know, would be on the prayer. Mama was on the prayer line. Listen, saints. Mama Temple was on the prayer line every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, voice was strong. Mind was sharp. And she will always address our prophetess as sister girl. girl. Amen. We're going to be um, honoring her. Amen. And standing with Clara Williams Edgecone, our valiant member. Clara, we're standing with you. want you to know and the Temple family. Mother Temple and uh, George is going to be laid to rest next Saturday at uh, 1 p.m. The homegoing ceremony is going to be at the Bethel Apostolic Church on 119th Street and uh, in Miami. Uh, there are COVID restrictions in place. They're going to be, uh, uh, family is arranging now for those who are going to be in attendance. There's a cap of 250. You must sign up if you plan to attend. It'll be on Facebook. It's being um, offered now by the uh, grandkids of uh, Mother Temple. You're going to see it there. Or you can call the church and we'll give you more information. But we're going to be standing in the gap with Clara, holding her up in prayer, knowing that God has positioned her for this season. Clara, you've been an amazing daughter. You've been an amazing mother, an amazing wife. And we honor you and we are standing with you today. We're also going to be standing with our 
Valiant member Deacon Oscar Ray. Oscar lost two of his brothers this past week. One was laid to rest on yesterday, and his other brother will be laid to rest on next Saturday as well at 1 p.m. the same time at Greg Mason Funeral Home. And we're standing with the Ray family. Deke, we're standing with you, Amen. praying for you and the family, knowing that God will walk with you through this valley. Know that the New Hope family loves you. Amen. And uh, we're going to be right there to uh, walk with you through this valley. You're not alone. We're right there with you. And we thank you so very much for your love and support of the New Hope ministry. So New Hope family, let's pray much for our valiant member, Deaconess Clara Williams Edgecone, and our chairman, uh, Deacon Oscar Ray, Stephanie Ray, and family. Also want to announce that we are partnering with the Jackson Memorial Hospital System uh, to participate in, giving, in getting seniors 65 and older vaccinated. We have 25 slots available for next Friday. We have only four slots left. Thank God we got 21 signed up and we got four slots left. If you are interested, please uh, give us a call here at the church or uh, call me personally, 305-218-4235. Uh, get in contact with our Valiant member, Elder Ann Crawford, or our Valiant member, Brother, Ro uh, Brother uh, Ralph Person. And uh, we will make sure you get, get set up. We want to get you healthy. Your health and well-being is, is, uh, is of utmost importance. And we do have these slots available uh, to get you vaccinated. Churches across the county, uh, from the south to the north, and even in Broward County, are participating in this process, and we know how important it is. So we want to make sure you have an opportunity uh, to get these vaccinations in your arms. Amen? God bless you, and God keep you is our prayer. Surviving the storm. Yes. My, 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 my. What a word we had today. Yes. Now listen. Listen, we had a word on first Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday, next Sunday, our very own pastor of our youth ministry, Pastor Sharia Isaac Bostic, is going to be giving the word. We're getting ready. Amen. We're getting ready. Amen. We're going higher and higher and higher. All right. We love you guys so much. Thank you for sharing and caring. And thank you for being a great member of the greatest church in the world, the New Hope Church. Pray for us as we pray for you. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Jamal, come on back up here. Come on, Randy. Thank you, Erica. Come on. Woo! Let the church say Everybody say amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church. Let the church. Let the whole church. Say amen. Will you preach today? Didn't he preach? He preached in this place. Say it. Let the church. Oh. spoken God has spoken so let the church let the church let the whole church say oh, can I get a witness make this your response Amen. whatever he says Amen. from the healing of your body Yo
your help is on the way. Why? God has that, God. Well, well, well. Let the church. Let the whole church. Father, we thank you now for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our heart have felt. We thank you for your power and your presence in this place. Thank you for this man of God that has spoke the word of God. Yes, we pray for him, his family. Yes, God. Watch over him as he go out, yes. as he come in. Yes, Lord. Open doors that was closed. Yes, Lord. We call resources yes, from the north, the south, Even the east, the and the west. God. To hit his house. Yes, Lord. Make him strong. Keep him strong. Yes. Keep his word in your belly. Yes. Keep a word in your mouth. Yes. As he decree and declare the goodness of God. Yes. Now go with us as we leave this place. But never your presence. This we ask in Jesus' name. Set. The whole church, all the deacons, all the deaconesses, all the members. God and God. Well, well, well. Let the church, let the church say, let the church say, let the church say, let the church say, God and God. bless you and we love you great job <laughs> boom shakalaka lack a boom <laughs>